Isn't it pretty cool that this tiny chip contains our phone number, stores all our contact numbers, allows us to send SMSs, remember those, and most importantly, gives us access to the internet, but it's only the size of your pinky fingernail? But did you know that the first SIM cards were way, way bigger, like the size of a credit card? So how do we get from this to this? Let's find out in today's episode on the history of SIM cards. SIM cards weren't always used in our mobile phones though. The world's first commercial mobile phone, the Motorola Dynatec 8000X, which was released in 1983, did not require a SIM card. However, it was the size of a shoe and weighed a whopping 1kg, which weighs as much as 5 iPhone 13 Pro Maxes combined. It sold for $4,000, which in today's money would set you back 10k. Imagine making a phone call with one of these back in the day. Hello? Hello? However, the introduction of the Global System for Mobile Communications, or GSM Networks for short, in the early 1990s required users to both own a device that could connect to the new 2G network and a way for the network provider to identify them. As such, in 1991, a Munich-based smart card maker, Gisig and Devrian, developed a silicon integrated circuit for Finnish network provider Radiolinia, who used the modules to identify and authenticate the subscribers of their network. These modules were made the size of a credit card and hence were aptly named Subscriber Identification Module Cards, otherwise known as SIM cards. From there, the SIM card began to shrink with the mini SIM introduced in 1996. This is the SIM card that I was used to seeing growing up, where you would remove the battery from the back of your phone to place the SIM card in a nook behind it. From there, SIM cards became even smaller, with the micro SIM being introduced in 2010 and the iPhone 4 as the first phone that supported it. It then shrank for a third time in 2012 with the nano SIM, which remains the pinky size chip that we have in our smartphones today. With the demand for data connectivity in our daily lives higher than ever before, manufacturers have started to directly embed SIM cards into our electronics, allowing for data connectivity plans to be directly downloaded onto them. These eSIMs play a vital role in rolling out the new 5G network in Singapore, such as the development of smart nation applications that will help improve our lives in the future. For example, there are currently tests ongoing for driverless remote-controlled road sweepers on Sentosa Island, so don't be too surprised if you see them on our roads soon. So, what's next for SIM cards? Many have predicted that physical SIM cards will be eventually phased out, while others have speculated that blockchain technology could replace SIM cards entirely. But for now, let's just appreciate how important this tiny chip is to our daily lives and the vital role it will play moving forward. Anyway, I hope you have learned a thing or two about SIM cards today. And for more interesting videos on the history of other forms of technology, please check out the series link in the description box below.